In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add hint captions to your Adobe Captivate question slides. One of the attendees of the Adobe Professional Certification Adobe Captivate course that I recently was a part of asked me about hint captions and I was sort of surprised by this but I realized at that point that it wasn't terribly obvious how you add hint captions in the all new Adobe Captivate. So let me show you the, the problem, why of course they weren't so uh, readily available and what you can do about it here. So here's my project here and I'm a big fan of hint captions because my feeling is that, you know, if you're struggling to get the answer correct, and you don't necessarily want to be given the answer, but you want a hint that's just going to remind you of something that was previously taught, or perhaps, you know, just a, a little bit of reinforcement is required here. So if we go into this slide here and we go down to our components section, you'll see that you can show the captions. And if I turn this on and I click on the caption, we'll see that it's a multi-state object. There's the correct answer. There's the incorrect answer and the incomplete. Like a lot of things in Adobe Captivate, you'd expect that maybe the hint caption would have been here by default and merely disabled because under this circumstance, you know, it may just not have been available. But here's the key thing, of course, when you have a single attempt on a question slide, obviously there's never going to be a hint caption. The other thing too is that if you select two attempts, yes, there's an incorrect caption that shows up, but that's not really the same thing as a hint caption. It's actually going to only appear when you add three or more answers. So if I choose three, ah, there it is. Here is a hint to help you answer the question. And of course, the one thing to consider, well, if I just go with unlimited, yeah, the hint caption shows up as well. But remember, if you choose unlimited attempts, you'll never see a hint caption because it will allow you to just keep trying again, trying again, trying again. So I would say three or more, but a finite number of tries. So in this case here, if we choose three, and then of course we'll see the hint caption. And of course you can add whatever message it is that you wish to include here. I like my hint captions to be more like coaching, you know, like something like consider the overall goal of instructional design and the various roles. So we're suggesting where to think about where you would find the right answer in your head, but you're not just giving away the answer here. So let's try this with this one here. Here's a matching question. We're going to set that to be three attempts and we'll go down and show the caption here. And you'll see, of course, the hint caption is there. And I've prepared another hint that I think is appropriate for this slide here. Again, you want to be like a coach, right? Think about if I was being coached by my manager or an expert, what might they say without necessarily giving away the answer and make it suggestive of something that you've already learned? You know, we want people to come up with the answer by using their head and thinking about uh, what it is here. So here's a short answer or fill in the blank, if you will. And we'll go down and we'll show this here again. We just have the three, but if we click here and we change this to three or more, we'll have a hint caption added there. Easy enough. Down here, I've got a sequence question. So you can do a hint caption for all the question types. I didn't use true or false because, you know, to me, I don't think a hint caption is necessary for true or false because there's really only two answers. But certainly something like the sequence question, uh, you know, we've got our hint caption here that we can add there as well. So let's just test this out and see how that works. So what's going to happen is the hint caption will appear as the second to last attempt. So if I have three tries, the first try I won't see the hint caption, I'll just see a try again message. But at the second attempt, because there are a total of three tries, I will see the hint caption at that point. So let's just uh, get this answer wrong first. That's incorrect, try again. Let's 
do this. Okay, now we see the hint caption. Consider the overall goal of instructional design, the various roles it plays in the learning process. Ah, you know, so developing, engaging, learning experience. There we go. We've got the right answer at that point there. So now here we've got this option of looking at different design and development processes here. And we'll just get that wrong. Oh, I got it right. Okay. <laughs> so here we'll just type in something here, a uh, random statement. And we'll submit that. That's incorrect. Try again. Another random statement. Now I see my hint. Ah, okay, so that's going to be, there we go, I got it right. And now, of course, we want to collect the data, analyze the data, and there, let's just get this wrong, first of all, that's incorrect. We'll try something else. Oh, there's my hint. Oh, so start by identifying the initial, right, so we're going to collect data analyze the data and identify the training. There we go. Got it right. So again, you can add a hint caption to your multiple choice, your fill in the blanks, your sequence question, your matching questions. Like I said, you could add it to a true or false, but I don't think you're going to need it in that case. And the other part of this video is just to emphasize that make sure your hints aren't just giving away the answer. You want to teach people what they need to know and do to perform their jobs, but we don't want to just give away the answer. We want them to synthesize the answer or come up with the answer by thinking about it critically. And then by using hint captions in combination with the other feedback, you'll end up with a more robust assessment. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.